This video is brought to you by SideQuest, my new gaming focused channel. For the second hidden gem of the series, I gave a shout out to the Starship Troopers movie, and while I thought it fit that category, a lot of people disagreed. However, there is a series related to that movie which absolutely fits the bill. The CG animated series Roughnecks The Starship Troopers Chronicles. Produced in 1999, Roughnecks takes inspiration from both the original Robert Heinlein novel as well as Paul Verhoeven's live action movie and follows the exploits of the titular Roughnecks as they fight for a newly united humanity against an extraterrestrial bug threat. The series is a single season of 36 episodes split up into smaller story arcs encompassing several different campaigns throughout the war. Presentation wise, Roughnecks is actually very strong, especially for the time it came out. Producing a fully 3D animated TV show back in the late 90s was a hugely ambitious task. And while TV show animation has certainly come a long way since, for the most part, it holds up. I should make a big disclaimer here though, this show is pretty difficult to find footage for and so the footage I was able to find is not its original resolution, thus if you were to seek out the show, it actually looks a lot better than what you're currently seeing. That being said, despite the low res images, I hope the footage is able to illustrate the great work which went into this show. Being in the middle ground between the book and the movie, Roughnecks carries over the excellent production design of the Verhoeven film, but is able to execute the more grandiose ideas of the novel with greater ease. We see a vast array of space ships, land vehicles, dropships, weapons, and of course, the Marauder mech suits, which are just awesome. As this was broadcast as a kids show, I find it incredible the producers behind it didn't make heaps of toys out of this show. I know little Rowan would have loved that stuff. Maybe adult Rowan as well. Thanks to its animated medium, Roughnecks is able to give us a broader glimpse of the wider Starship Troopers universe, which the movies were unable to do due to budget constraints. We begin on the desolate rocky world of Pluto, and then go to the tropical jungles of Tesca, deserts of Tophet, outer space, and even back on Earth. All of it terrifically rendered on screen with plenty of eye candy throughout, not to mention overall sharp direction. One element which I think could have been a bit better is the sound design. At times it feels a little thin and some of the machine guns don't have the punch I think they should. But this is compensated somewhat by the awesome soundtrack composed by John Latham. Being this was the late 90s veering into the early 2000s, the soundtrack is electronically driven as opposed to the traditional orchestra, but here it's really good. It gives Roughnecks a style and pace quite unlike other sci-fi shows, effortlessly carrying the action and laying on a futuristic atmosphere. It almost resembles Clinton Shorter's work on The Expanse in some places, with its use of culturally distinct instruments and vocals. The titular Roughnecks themselves are a likeable band of soldiers to follow along. Much like the book and movie, the overall protagonist is Johnny Rico, voiced here by Reno Romano. He's the classic archetype of a hot-headed, loose cannon who matures and takes on more responsibilities over the course of the war. A typical but entertaining character nonetheless. The leader of the squad is Razak here as opposed to Radchak in the movies. Voiced by Jamie Haynes, Razak is virtually identical to his movie counterpart played by Michael Ironside, a seasoned veteran and sometimes grueling commanding officer, but more loyal and caring of his soldiers than perhaps others in the mobile infantry. Dizzy Flores, voiced by Elizabeth Daly, is also a lot like Dina Meyer from the live action film. But in Roughnecks, I actually think the character is given richer material than in the movie. We get to see her relationship with Rico and the others develop in more depth thanks to the longer running time of a TV series as opposed to a movie. However, this version of Carl Jenkins isn't nearly as good as Neil Patrick Harris in the movie. But then again, that's hardly fair because Neil Patrick Harris has virtually endless on screen charisma. Gossard and Doc are a great duo, often in a supporting role, but always there to inject a welcome bout of humour to the episodes. They're often the ones with the best quips and one-liners, although of the two, Gossard gets the more in-depth character development. The same goes for Bruto, the all-brawn, no-brains knucklehead, who often clashes with other members of the squad. Rounding off the squad is Paperboy Higgins, voiced by Alexander Polinsky. He's the green as grass rookie, originally assigned to the squad as a journalist. He is soon thrown into the deep end of war, eventually coming into his own as a capable trooper in his own way. And eventually we have Tafai, the alien squad member who enlists with the mobile infantry following the Tophet campaign. This character is pretty awesome and really completes the central dynamic between the main characters. He first encounters the Roughnecks as a brainwashed villain, then as a downtrodden outsider, and eventually a valued member of the squad itself. 
He has the most detailed character arc, the most distinct personality thanks to his alien perspective, and is wonderfully voiced by Steve Staley. He's pretty easily my favourite character of the show. Other recurring characters from the book and movie show up as well, such as Rico's high school crush Carmody Benners, and even Clancy Brown returns to voice Sergeant Zim. None of the characters are particularly deep, but they are well voiced with big personalities and a fun dynamic between them. Despite their action figure-like appearance, the show does succeed in making these characters feel like real people, and making the audience care about their journey through the war, something which is well handled in the storytelling of the show. But first, this video is brought to you by my new gaming channel, SideQuest. It's a new channel which means only a handful of videos have been released thus far, but the content is a healthy mix of video essays similar to what I do here, as well as myself and friends utterly failing at playing games properly. For the Trekkies of this channel, we have plans to do more videos on more Trek games, and for general gamers we have plenty more great videos in the works. Jump over there and subscribe to keep up to date with all the new uploads. Now that the shameless self-promotion is over, back to the regular video. The world of Roughnecks, like its many other elements, is a hybrid of the serious themes of Heinlein's novel and the satire of Verhoeven's movie. The propaganda segments carry over to the show, but are heavily contrasted by the often sombre tone cast over the events by Higgins' narration. But by presenting this contrast, Roughnecks manages to have its cake and eat it by showcasing loads of cool action spectacle, but also subverting the action with some nuance. Each campaign has the Roughnecks believing they're about to strike the decisive blow which will end the war, only for them to find out intel was wrong, and the fighting will continue. In the moment-to-moment -moment action, your inner child gets caught up in the fun explosions and mech suits, but then caught off guard when Higgins' sobering commentary of the events almost makes each victory seem hollow. It's not particularly complex storytelling, but it demonstrates some effort on the part of the writers to create something a bit more interesting than just mindless action. That being said, the action itself is consistently gripping. The large-scale battles let us take in the breadth of these alien worlds. One of the later campaigns has a stunningly well-directed space battle. While this action is the focus, it doesn't get repetitive. The writers and directors behind the show always find ways of making the action scenes different, more personal, more spectacular. These larger battles soon give way to more intense, claustrophobic affairs which facilitate the character arcs for the squad. The growing threat of the brain bugs, only hinted at in the original movie, gives the entire conflict a new dimension in Roughnecks. Rather than the threat of monstrous arachnids, paranoia of infiltration soon sets in. Overall, the scope of the war actually becomes narrower as the show goes on, shifting the dynamic of the squad and having each character grow in interesting directions. By the time we reach the Homefront campaign and the bug invasion of Earth itself, these characters have truly grown. They've become closer friends and they've learned from their mistakes. Despite all the challenges it had to overcome, Roughnecks does succeed in being both visually spectacular and at times emotionally evocative. It's just unfortunate things weren't so stable behind the scenes. As I've said before, Roughnecks was an incredibly ambitious show for its time. 3D animation was still a new thing on the big screen, and so to try and use the same method for a kid's TV show was a massive challenge. If you think the animation looks rough, compare it to something like Beast Wars which was airing at the same time, and you'll see how impressive Roughnecks actually is. Animation is difficult and time consuming in general, and using brand new technology to create it must have been even harder. Which is why it blew my mind when I found out that this show was supposed to air 5 episodes a week. That is a gruelling schedule, and apparently this deal was made before enough of a backlog was created to stay ahead of the deadlines. As a result, Roughnecks often repeated episodes like crazy in its original run, but when new episodes were completed, ongoing story arcs which were already airing would have then been interrupted by a completely different story arc. This led to the creation of several clip show episodes just so the animators could try and stay on track. And on top of all of this, most networks were broadcasting the show as early as 6am. With such a poorly managed schedule, it's no wonder Roughnecks was unable to find an audience, and after 36 of the planned 40 episodes were aired, it was cancelled, leaving the show in a frustrating cliffhanger. Despite this, however, eventual VHS tapes and DVDs allowed the show to find a modest enough following, which included myself. Roughnecks is entertaining as hell, boasting awesome action set pieces, enjoyable characters, and a fresh take on the Starship Troopers universe. While it's pretty difficult to find these days, it's absolutely worth the binge. That Nexus 6 guy asks, what are your thoughts on Lex? I will actually be doing a video on Lex possibly next month. Not quite sure what I'm going to title it just yet, but I watched season 1 a while back and have been making notes on the video this month, so stay tuned. Andy Luke asks, will you be doing any videos on non-sci-fi stuff? I still want to do fantasy content, even though no one has watched it so far. 
Uh, but outside of sci-fi and fantasy, my other channel, Bean Brain, is for that stuff. I know I've already done some shameless self-promotion for my gaming channel in this video, but here's some more for my other, other YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do and want to see more videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on all my new uploads. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, join me over on my Patreon where you can see videos like this early. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.